I'm not going over, over too much. It's going to be a short clip, 20, 30 minutes. I'm going to engage with y'all brothers. Make sure y'all study and make sure y'all being real with yourself. So today's topic will be titled um, <coughs> Identifying Sins. We're just going to go over a few precepts. Uh, being new in the truth, realizing what this is all about. I'm going to tell y'all straight up right now, brothers. If you're not able to identify your stronghold, your faults, your sins, you're not going to last. Because your sins are going to overcome you and going to tell you apart. If you can't identify them. Identify them is half the battle. At least you know, and then you can start doing what? Repenting. Repenting. You can start working at it. All right? Start off with uh, Psalm chapter 32 and 1. All right, we're going to read down a little bit. It's the book of Psalms chapter 32 and uh, the first verse. Psalms chapter 32 verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord inputteth not iniquity, and whose and whose spirit there is no guile. No guile, all right? No, um, nothing ill, all right? No, um, what is it? No strife, no guile, no rebuttal. So Christ walked the whole earth, all right? He was ridiculed, he was lied against, but in his spirit, he had no guile, all right? He took it cheerfully, he was patient. Uh, we ought to be the same way. Read verse two again. Verse two. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. It says, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. Come on. And in whose spirit there is no God. Read on. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. Come on. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drum of summer. Uh -huh. Say la. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. King David did what? I acknowledge my sin unto thee. So, brothers, we must do the same thing our forefather did. We must come to grips. we got to be real with ourselves. We have to acknowledge our sins. Who in here is perfect? Who in here is perfect? Now, what makes us perfect? The laws of God. The laws of God is what make you perfect. So what? You have to study... Right? you got to search the scriptures first and foremost to see, you know what? Okay, I didn't know this. So now I realize that this is something I deal with. I have to acknowledge it, and then after that, I can build off of that thing. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. All right, read it again. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, Come on. and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Say la. See, that's what y'all brothers got to understand. Give me that in Acts 319. You have to understand, you have to acknowledge it because, brothers, if you fake the funk, the Most High God is not going to forgive you. He's not going to free you of that sin. He's not going to give you a chance at that new life, to walk in the newness of life, if you are continuing to do the same thing knowingly and you don't want to repent from it. Or you don't want to be real and come to grips and acknowledge it. All right? Uh, read, read that. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Uh -huh. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. You see that? That's, we read this at camp all the times, but it's true. Your sins have to be blotted out. How, how do we get to the kingdom of heaven, brothers? Think about it. We're going over the basics today. How do we get to the kingdom of heaven? Hands. Uh, let me hear your heart. Uh, it's Matthew 19. Let's read it. Let's read it. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Do what? Keep the commandments. Get out in Revelation 22. Revelation 22. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Come on. Bless are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Right. So if we want our sins to be blotted out, what must we do? We got we got to keep the commandments. Meaning what? You got to repent from your sins. You got to repent from your sins. Simple as that. Why, why are we going over a class like this? Because it's not as simple as that. Because brothers always put something in the way of the simplicity in Christ. They always try to confuse it. They always try to make it hard. When God gave a straight commandment, give me that. Second Edge 721. 
and he gave a straight commandment on what we should do to live. But we always complicate it. We always put our two cents in it. All right, this is just a refresher class. Get you back on focus. Remember why we're here. We're not here to be seen on camp videos. We're not here for bank glory. We're not here to have clicks. We're not here to only get uh, fish, fish at the end of the Sabbath. We're not here for all these things. We're here in sincerity trying to get ourselves right. That's the only reason why anybody should be in these seats. And not because you're being dragged here either. If you're being dragged here, you should leave. You shouldn't come back because you're not going to make the kingdom. I'm <laughs> let you know right now. If you're being forced to come, you don't really want to come. I mean, why fake the phone? You understand? Why even fake it? Just leave. All right, read that. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 21. For God hath given straight commandment to such as come, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what should and what they should observe to avoid punishment. You see that? He said he gave it straight to us. But we add to that and make it harder than what it is. Carnal level. Carnal level. What's the order? God sets up uh, the bishops, the deacons, the captains, the officers, soldiers, brothers. All right? The elder sisters, uh, the younger sisters. Why do you think the Most High God did that? By show of hands. Why do y'all think that? Brothers of court. Because he wanted everything to be done decently in order. I need more. Think about what we just went over. No, you keep the mic. Think about what we just went over in regards to God giving a straight commandment. So it'd be easier on you. It'd be easier on us, right. So the Most High God has a hierarchy. He has the order established here on earth. So, for example, say a higher ranking man gives an order and you don't follow it. But he gave a straight command, right? You understand? God gives a straight command. Man says, hey, do this. But you say, ah, ah, no, I should do this. I need to think about this. That's the same thing when the Most High God says, thou shalt not cover. And you say, well, I'm burning right now. You know, I don't have as much time to study. I'm working. You know, my wife is nagging me. I really want to deal with her. So at the end of the day, it's like, I got to look at this. You see that? How everything else except listening to what the order was got into the way? We are the ones who get in the way. How do I know that? I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from personal experiences and being over men. That's the same thing over and over and over again. So we have this class today going over the basics, just a refresher, just to remind us, why are you here? We are here to do the will of God. Speaking of that, what's the will of God? Who knows? No, no, let me hear hands. Let me see hands. Me hear, who knows? Who knows what the will of God is? Everybody. Uh, let me hear this brother right here. Say your name. Brother Kendall. Brother Kendall. All right. What's the will of God? Psalm 48. Good. Let's go here. Psalm chapter 40 and verse 8. What is the will of God? The book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 8. Come on. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Thy law is within his heart. So, we just read in 2 Andrew 7 and 21. He gives us straight commandments. And he says it more than one time in his scriptures. He says it over and over and over again. Because he knows who he's dealing with. We're the most rebellious people on the face of the earth. So he says it over and over again the same way, sometimes different ways. But it's the same thing. All right? Now, let we'll drop that. Drop that. Let's go to Strong 4 and 26. Dealing with the topic of acknowledging your sins. All right? The book of Sirach, chapter 4, verse 26. Come on. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins. Do what? Be not ashamed to confess thy sins. And force not the course of the river. And force not the course of the river. Don't... Don't make things hard on yourselves, brothers. If you're dealing with something, if you got a stronghold, you got to bring that thing forth. You have to bring that thing. Give me um, Sirach 14 and 2. Sirach chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. Blessed is he who, excuse me, blessed is he whose conscience had not condemned him. It says, blessed is he whose conscience has not condemned him. Because, give me that, Sirach 3 24, because a lot of times, we allow our minds to deceive us, to think that what we are doing, thinking, or feeling is correct. But we got to understand something. And then 
Give me that one in Wisdom of Solomon 9. We hardly guess it right after this one. Read this. Sirach chapter 3 verse 24. Come on. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. When I came into the truth, when I first heard this one, that, that did a lot for me, personally. Read it again. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Because I was an overthinker. I would overthink things a lot. Once I heard this scripture, that was like, um, like I got un unlocked to another level. You feel what I'm saying? It's like, you know what? Wow. That just answered a lot to me because I, I get told something, I'm thinking there's more to it. I'm thinking I, I got to add to it, I got to search. No, 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 no. The Bible says that many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Meaning what? If you hear something, take your face value. It's not up to you to assume what they mean by that. No, no, no. He doesn't really mean for me to... No, 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 no. Just listen to it. Whatever God says, listen to it and go off of that. Don't go off of your own mind because it says what? For many are deceived by their own vain opinions. Many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Now, when it comes to God's laws, our opinions mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. Did you get it for me? Wisdom of Solomon? The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. You see that, right? It just said, for many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Then it says, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. So it's showing us what, brothers? We shouldn't lean into our own understanding, should we? No, sir. Should we lean into our own understanding, brothers? No, sir. No, we shouldn't. We shouldn't do that thing. We. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Come on. And our devices are but uncertain. But uncertain. That's that factor that comes into play when a straight command comes out. And now we have our, our uncertain devices trying to make things rational. But at the beginning, we should have just kept the commandments. We should have just did it simp 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 simply. Is that what I want? I don't think that's right. I don't know. We should have just did it because the commandments are simple. I think that's what I want to say. Read it again. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Come on. And our devices are but uncertain. Read. For the corruptible body passes down the soul. And the earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. Muses upon many things. Our minds go everywhere except God's laws. Proverbs 35. Proverbs 3 and 5. Basics. Y'all gonna get just, just a, a storm of basic precepts thrown on you today. The Be book. Because the basic precepts, brother, I'm telling you right now. I, I know me personally. I'm not going to be impressed if you that brother who has just a gang of precepts I ain't never heard. Because I'm going to look at your house. I'm going to see how you operate. I'm going to see how you deal with the brothers. I'm going to see how you deal on a daily basis. That's what I'm looking at. I don't care about that. Because the basic precepts is all you need. I'm telling you right now. It's all you really need. All that other stuff is extra. Just make it look good. But I'm looking at the man himself. All right. I hear you, brother. I hear you. But what are you doing in your house? What are you doing every day? Is your kids in order? Is your wife in order? Are you, are you consistent? Do you come on time? Are you reliable? All of those things come into play. And brothers, I'm letting y'all know right now, that's why we're going over the basics. Because sometimes we get caught up in other things when this is really what we need to get to our ultimate goal. Okay, read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Do what? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Come on. And lean not unto thine own understanding. And lean not unto thine own understanding. All right, watch this. Sirach 21 and 7. Sirach, chapter 21, verse 7. Come on. An eloquent man is known far and near. But a man of understanding knoweth when he slippeth. A man of what? A man of understanding knoweth when he slippeth. It says he knows when he slips. Meaning he knows when he's going off. Meaning what? He was able to what? Acknowledge his sins. He was able to acknowledge his sins. So that man, he got some understanding. How do you get an understanding? What's the scripture? Uh, Brothers of Korah. Psalms 111. Let's go there. How do you get understanding? It all goes back to the law, brothers. 
over and over and over again. How do you get understanding? How am I able to be the guy that when I'm going off, I say, damn, I'm going off. I need to fix it. How am I able to do that? Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Have all they that do his commandments. I got to tell y'all a story about my blood brother. I got I, I to gotta give it to him. It is what it is. He's my blood brother. He know he Israel. He's known he Israel for years. This brother one day decides to call me right around Tabernacles and decides to try to go toe for toe with me on the new moon. His, his doctrine is that the new moon is at a crescent. When the, when the moon is at a crescent, so I asked him, I said, all right, bro, I, I hear you. What scripture you base that off of? Well, you got to go into the Hebrew. I was like, no, 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 see? See, that's where, that's where there's a disconnect. Because the scripture said, precept must be upon. Precept. Precept. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. The scripture says, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is true. God's laws are true. That's right. You understand? We read about the new moons and numbers. Psalms 81, Psalm 43. We can go to the law and find out about the new moon. So I asked him, I said, all right, I hear you. Now, show it to me. He couldn't show it to me. So it came back and forth, back and forth, to the point where I had to go mad and die on him. I had to blast him. I had to. He's my blood brother. He older. It is what it is. He got mad. He hung up. Just saw him the other day, right? Had no fringes on. Had no, no, him nor his family had any fringes on. I'm looking at this brother. You know you Israel for the last six years. And we went to an engagement with my wicked family members, right? That was a chance to do what? Let your light shine before men so others can see. But you try to argue with me, but you're not even doing what? You're not even keeping commandment one. You understand that? So when it goes to these commandments, brothers, when it goes to keeping God's commandments, y'all brothers are at an advantage because this camp, we teach God's commandments. That's right. So you have an advantage already because guess what? The most high is dealing with you. He's dealing with you at a certain level right now, whether you believe it or not, because you apply his commandments. Don't be that brother who knows to do well, but forsakes the commandments. That Your spirit's gone. Your spirit is gone. You're now a reprobate. That's what it's going into. The book of Sirach, chapter 21, verse 7. An eloquent man is known far and near, but a man of understanding knoweth when he slippeth. All right, so this brother knows when he slips. All right, we got to know when we're slipping. Um, how are we going to do that? Um, examine yourself. All right, examine yourself every day. Um, Paul says he dies um, how often? Hey. Hey. Now, go to 2 uh, Corinthians 13. Let's get that real quick. <laughs> Second, verse 5. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. All right, examine yourselves. On the look at yourselves. I mean, look at your lives, your, on the wives and your children. Look at yourselves. Um, God wants you to look in the mirror. On um, what type of brother are you? All right, man, are you on a sincere about this thing? Or, uh, I also say it a lot of times, on the faith in the front. All right, I'm reading. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. And then prove yourselves. It's easy to say, yeah, I'm about that. I'm about this work. It's easy to say it. And then you got to prove it. How do you do that? Actions. Uh, where's your actions at now? Are you on the sometime you showing up? Are you the brother that makes excuses every time uh, correction come out? <laughs> Are you quick to point the finger? Hey, man, it was him. Uh, what's your actions showing? Are your children um, back there unruly? Are your women over here talking while scriptures is coming out? Um, prove yourself on the reading. Know ye not your own selves? Uh, don't you know who you are? Uh, don't you know your lifestyle? On the reading. How that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobates. And we quick to say that we got Christ in us. Uh, we quick to say that we got that personal relationship. Um, go to 1 John uh, chapter 2 and 3. 
First two, when we find out about the scriptures, God will call you a liar to your face. That's right. <laughs> He'll try your spirit. I don't read that. First John chapter 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. Man, that's a cut to Christianity. All them high rolling Christians, I know them. I got a personal relationship with them. Saved and sanctified. Are you keeping the commandments? I'm reading. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Is a what? Is a liar. Read. And the truth is not in him. And the truth ain't in you. All right, examine it. I'm examining your lives uh, that we're supposed to be doing. Are we showing up to camp one on one when we can? Or are we quick to, uh, I just, I don't feel like it. Are we doing what this Bible tells us to do? All right, go ahead. I'm going to go off exactly on the examine yourself uh, aspect uh, of today we just brought out. Uh, give me Sirach 1 verse 19. How can you examine yourself if you don't know the basics? If you don't know what God's required? Give me that. Sirach chapter 1 verse 19. Wisdom raineth down skill and knowledge of understanding and exalteth them to honor that hold her fast. Hold what fast? Hold God's commandment. Wisdom. Learning the scripture, learning the basics is what God going to help you. Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. The fear of the Lord driveth away sins. How are you going to be able to drive away sin? Because you know better. You have that discipline to know what you should do and what you should not do. You understand the consequences of sin. Like it's telling you in Sirach 21. Say, flee from sin as fleeing from the face of a serpent. Because you don't want to uh, 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 entangle yourself with, with those spirit that you're dealing with. Because all these sins are nothing but spirit. When you allow yourself to uh, uh, entangle yourself with these spirits, you open doors to other spirits. That's all. All praise. All praise. Let's go back to Sirach 21 and 7. Dealing with this uh, man of understanding. Dealing with that man of understanding. Sirach chapter 21 verse 7. An eloquent man is known far and near, but a man of understanding knoweth when he slippeth. Knoweth when he slippeth. Uh, read verse 11. Verse 11. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom is wisdom meaning what it's one thing to keep god's laws but to have wisdom that's that next level brothers give me that in strong 18 and 20. it's one thing to know god's laws right but that wisdom is going to give you the understanding on how to apply it in certain situations so that's why it says wisdom write it down skill skill Skill. For example, on a sports team, I know in football, you have linemen, you have linebackers, and then you have skill players. Skill players are your running backs, your quarterbacks, your corners, your wide receivers. There's something different about them than everybody else. Everybody's a football player, but they're skill players because they encompass something that everybody else doesn't have. Same thing in his truth. All of us know that we're the Israelites, right? That's right. That we know that Christ is a black man, right? That we have to keep God's commandments to make it to the kingdom of heaven, right? Yes, but everybody don't have wisdom. And everybody does not have discretion. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 20. On. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. It says that all wisdom is the performance of God's laws, all right? The performance of God's laws. Give me that in Sirach 33 and 29. Sirach 33 and 29. Watch this. Watch so, this. Sirach chapter 33 verse 29. But be not excess—excuse me. But be not excessive toward any, and without discretion do nothing. It says, and without discretion do nothing. You gotta know when is the time to speak, and when is not the time to speak. 
Sirach chapter 32, verse 7. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. Right. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. Same thing with these actual children back here. I see too many times you got grown-ups speaking, and these children are running amok, talking in the midst of adults. Parents, teach your children some discretion. Teach your children some discretion. It still, it still baffles me sometimes that we got God's laws. And I see in the nation is we got some of the worst kids. That still doesn't make sense to me. We have the blueprint right here on how to teach our children to behave, but I continue to see disrespectful children. Children running around, their parents don't know where they're at. Because why? Because they have not developed skill yet. They have not developed wisdom on how to apply God's laws. But that's what this class is about. That's what this class is for. All right, let's drop that. Sirach 23 and 11. The book of Sirach, chapter 23, verse 11. One. A man that useth much swearing shall be filled with iniquity, and the plague shall never depart from his house. If he shall offend, his sin shall be upon him. All right, so first step. It says, if he sin, if he shall offend, his sin shall be upon him. That's transgression right then and there. Now let's watch the second part of that. Read on. And if he acknowledge not his sin. And if he do what? And if he acknowledge not his sin. Meaning what? Realize the transgression of his ways. Read. He maketh a double offense. That's a double offense. So you already sinned. That's one. And then the point where, you, you know what? What I did was okay. Not confessing or acknowledging your sin. Now it's double. It's double time bad. You understand that, right? It's one thing to fall and make a mistake, right? But then to fall and continue to do it and not, and act like nothing was wrong, yeah, that's double the sin. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 40. The book of Lamentations chapter 3, verse 40. Come on. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. I see that, brothers. We got to search and try our ways constantly. We got to always think about how we can better ourselves. Don't be uh, content with status quo. Don't be okay with just being at the same level you're at. You got to continually, continually try yourself. Meaning what? Try your ways. Put yourself in situations where it pushes you not to be comfortable. If you're a non-sociable person, you need to be speaking to everybody all of the time to make yourself feel uncomfortable. Whatever sin or whatever demon that you are plagued with, that you struggle with, you need to make yourself uncomfortable. The, what does it say in the gospel? If, you're, if your eye offend you, pluck it out. You gotta go to the extreme. Not meaning pluck your little eye out. It just means put yourself in that bad situation. If you battle against porn, you need to put a parental block on your phone so you can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, go to the extreme. Don't give yourself a chance to go there. You understand what I'm saying? Make yourself uncomfortable. So you got to try your ways and turn back to the Lord. Okay, I went off in this particular area. So I got to try my ways, all right? I got to go to the extreme on this, and I got to repent and come back to the Father. All right, from there. Let's go to 2 Peter 2 and 12. The, the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 12. Come on. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that are things that they understand not Come on. and shall utterly perish in their own corruption Read. and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime uh -huh. sports they are blemishes spots they are oh, spots blemishes. spots they are, they are and blemishes stop so it's saying spots they are and blemishes meaning what when it comes to the body of Israel these are those particular spirits who are blemishes, spots, wrinkles, 1 Corinthians 11 and 19. First, we're going to right back to tie it in, but watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19. Come on. For there must be also heresies among you. Come on. That they which are approved may be made manifest among you. So you're going to have those particular spirits amongst us who are going to be those spots and those blemishes. Meaning what? They're going to be self-willed. All right? When the correction comes out, they're not going to take it. They're not going to want to acknowledge their sins. They are literally here for that reason, to be that spot or that blemish. But it's to make what? 
those who are approved, they're going to rise to the top because they're going to spot that thing out. They're not going to cling to that because they understand what the law says. It's to try each and every last one of us. Now let's go back to 2 Peter 2. And verse 13. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 13. Come on. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceiving. With their own what? With their own deceiving. Read. While they feast with you. While they feast with you. Meaning what? They're deceiving their own self. They're in here faking the funk while they sit at the new moon with you. While they sit at the Passover with you, when they sit amongst you on the Sabbaths, they're deceiving their own selves. Now, this class is to wake you up, re re uh, what is it? re energize you, so you can get back on track. If that was you, repair from it quickly. <laughs> if you deceive yourself, repair from that thing quickly. All right? For, uh, from there, 2 Corinthians 7 and 9. I'm doing the same thing that Paul's doing. Right now, if you feel sorrowful or if you feel cut, I do not apologize for that because it inspires or it provokes godly sorrow. And we're going we're gonna to learn what godly sorrow leads to. Read what you got. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. Come on. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry. So I'm not, I'm not rejoicing that you are sorrowful. I'm not rejoicing for that. Read. But that ye sorrow to repentance. That you sorrow to repentance. Now, that's my job. That's what the, the leader's job, the watchman's job is to do. We're to get you to realize your faults and your errors and to get you to sorrow to repentance. Meaning what? Acknowledge your faults or your sins. So you can start dealing with it and overcoming it. Read it again. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrow to repentance. Come on. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Uh huh. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. To salvation. To salvation. To get you back on track. So when Christ does come, you actually make it. You understand that? Yes, sir. Read. Not to be repented of. So I'm not going to repent of it. Sometimes, some of you, as you continue to come, I'm going to just be straight blunt with you. I'm going to tell you like it is. You know, when you're, young, when you're new, uh, I'm pretty nice. I'm pretty, you know, I, I give you time to get yourself together. But after a while, I'm going to tell you like it is. And I don't care how you take it. Because that's not my job to care about your feelings. I don't, that's not why I'm here. I'm here to make sure that you are doing what? Keeping God's commandments. That's why I'm here. So, yeah, you hear it, but it's going to come a time where you actually, okay, now I see what he's talking about. That's what you're going to learn from all of us up here. We're not here to make you feel good. We're here to provide what is good, and that's God's laws. All right? Uh, from there, let's go to 2 Corinthians 12 and 7. All right? Just because you deal with something, that doesn't mean you're wicked. That is not what it means. That means that every last one of us deals with something. What does it say in Corinthians 10? There's not... Actually, let's read that one first. Was it 10 to 17? 10 to 14? 10.13, that one. Give me that one. And then it said Corinthians 12. So. First Corinthians 10, 13. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Come on. There had no temptation taken you, but such as in common to man. Common to man. Meaning what? Okay. If you deal with lust for animals. All right. That's kind of weird, right? Somebody deals with lust for animals. I'm telling you, just like somebody deals with lust for another man, somebody deals with lust for animals. You think it's great? Why? It would be written in the book if our people wasn't plagued with it. That's what you got to understand. So whatever that lust is, it doesn't matter. But just understand that you must overcome it. That's your trial. Or like Paul says, 2 Corinthians 12 and 7, Paul calls it something else. 2 Corinthians 12 and 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. And least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. So Paul's saying because of the understanding he has, the reason 
why he's plagued with what he was plagued with, which was uh, evil concupiscence, strong, uh, lustful sexual desires. The reason why he was plagued with that particular sin is why. So he wouldn't be exalted above measure. He wouldn't think that he was better than his brothers. Because the Most High revealed a lot of things to Paul. All right? But he still had that what? Th that sin plaguing him. So don't think that you're wicked because you have that sin plaguing you. That's every, all of us. That's why we went to 1 Corinthians 10. That's to keep you level-headed, to keep you humble. You understand that, right? Sure. Now, you are wicked if you just live in that lust. There's a difference. If you are plagued with it and tempted by it, that's one thing. But when you give in and live and let that lust control you, yeah, then, yeah, then you are wicked. All right? Read what you got. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Come on. At least I shall be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. A what? A thorn in the flesh. Come on. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Read. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. So we got to do the same example. We got to continue to go before the Lord. But guess what? I'm going to tell you, I mean, it's new sisters straight up. It ain't ever going to go away. I'll tell you straight. Because when I first came, I thought it was just going to go away. And I was like, damn. Now, certain things going to go away, like the way you treat others. Say you were mean-spirited. You get better. And eventually, like, you know, I, I'm actually very nice. But there's certain sins that are always going to be there, waiting for you to go back to it. Just going to keep doing that. Like, damn, today... Damn, not again. But um, James 4, James 4, 7. This is what happens. You get stronger. You get stronger. You learn how to fight that demon. But that doesn't mean the demon goes away. Paul just called it what? His thorn in the flesh. And he went before the Most High thrice, three times about it. But it still wasn't removed. Because that was set on him to do what? To keep him in check. To keep him in check. Because it's real easy to get high-minded. Say you have about three good Sabbaths in a row. Damn, hey, I ain't commit no sin in three Sabbaths. I'm untouchable. Hey, nigga, you need to listen to what I'm saying. No, 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 no. That demon's going to come back. Hey, nigga, I ain't forgot about you. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I am like everybody else. You understand? Sir. Read what you got. James chapter 4, verse 7. Come on. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from so you. That's the key. Resist, resist, resist. Resist the devil. That's the key. That's how you get the strength. It doesn't say that you'll never be tempted with it again. They'll flee for you for a time, then he'll come back. They'll flee again, then he'll come back. That's that thorn in the flesh. So, men, you got to do what? You got to gird up your loins and get ready for the battle. Hello, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.